with these UFAs still unsigned, Toronto may look to pick these guys up to boost their bottom six. How will they fit, and how much would it cost the Leafs? We'll discuss this and much more coming up on this episode of Hatrick HQ. But before we get into all that, we just wanted to say that 96% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you're looking for a home to daily NHL content and Leafs content, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. But with that said, let's get right into the first topic of this video with these guys could boost the Leafs bottom six. And the first guy we're going to talk about is Thomas Tatar. Obviously, Thomas Tatar has been uh, a well household name uh, for uh, many years in the NHL. Uh, he's been a great uh, uh, goal scorer uh, throughout his whole career as we take a look at his stats here. Last year in New Jersey, played all 82 games uh, with 20 goals and 28 assists, uh, and he's only at 32 years old. Uh, and we take a look at his most recent contract here. Uh, he uh, it was on a $4.5 million contract uh, with the New Jersey Devils, but I would say he's probably going to take a pay cut this year. Uh, but I just want to say, Mark, I had to break out the Thomas Tatar bobblehead for this video. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Thomas Tatar uh, when he was on the Habs. Uh, one of my favorite players on the Habs during that time. And, you know, if he's added to the Leafs somehow, uh, it would just boost their goal-scoring potential through their bottom six. Yeah, no, definitely. Even like a guy like Tatar, you've seen last year, he still can produce goals. You could even slot him into a second line role or a third line role. I think a fourth line would be almost a little overkill for a guy like that. But you see a guy, he's a good goal scorer. He's great on the power play. He can move the puck. Might not be the best defensively, but you know, a lot of these guys that are kind of floating around right now aren't the best defensive or they would be signed. But I think a guy like this, yeah, if Toronto can pick him up, you know, you put him into the third line. It's almost like when we talked about Phil yesterday. I think he'd play almost a similar role where he can be that threat by scoring, passing, and it kind of boosts not only the middle six or bottom six, but also boosts your power play so much. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, if you throw this guy down there in the third line with, like, David Kampf and Max Domi, I think last year he scored 20 goals. I could see him maybe get 25 uh, playing with those uh, type of caliper guys. Uh, obviously, like you said, this is a, a great guy. You could throw him in on the power play unit too. And, you know, he's just teed up from Ovi's office and he can just rip him home. Uh, he's just such such a great player, uh, such a great guy. Like I said, I loved him during his time in Montreal. Uh, he was just such a... Just just a great uh, goal scorer, a great personality, and you know he, you'd love to have him in Toronto. Uh, I think you know he is coming off a bit of an expensive contract, but now at 32 years of age, I think you know if he's looking to maybe get that cup, I think you could look at getting him for a million or, or just a million and a half. Yeah, no, definitely. The only thing is, might be one and a half, two million might be more of a range for him, especially a one-year deal if he wants to just kind of start chasing for the cup. So when you see him signing in Toronto, if he did, I think you would have to lose a guy like Kelly Yarncroke or just a situation where Lafferty goes and maybe another piece just to kind of fix it under the cap. But yeah, no, I think a million, if you could get him for that, it'd be an absolute steal for this team. Yeah, for sure. And we hope to see that happen. We're going to get into our next guy here who is Josh Bailey. And obviously, Josh Bailey has been a great forward for the New York Islanders in his time. Uh, last year, obviously, uh, his contract was bought out by Chicago, which I uh, hate to see, but this guy ha has been a great uh, forward in this league uh, for a long, for a while now. Uh, his, his career high was 71 points uh, in New York. And obviously, uh, throughout that playoff, those couple of playoff runs, he played very solid as well. Uh, he is coming off... Uh, a contract here with five million AAV, uh, but obviously, like you said, that was bought out by Chicago in June. Uh, but this guy, you know, hometown guy from Ontario, I think he could definitely take a pay cut to come back and play for his hometown team. Yeah, no, definitely. You see a lot of these Ontario guys as they're getting a little older, they like to come home, you know, try to get the cup to Toronto finally. So, you know, Josh Bailey's more of a playmaker. He can still pot you 10, 15 goals. But I think it'd be a perfect situation where just say you wanted to put Domi into your top six and maybe bring a guy like Nyes or Bertuzzi down to the third. If you slot him in there as just a primary playmaker on that line, I think it would be exceptional for a young guy like that. As I said in the video before, is Kemp might score you 10 to 15, but he's never really had that pure playmaker on the line with him. So if you could put a guy like Nyes or Bertuzzi down there with a guy like Josh Bailey and Kemp, 
I think you get a pretty much everything you want in a guy that can play make, a guy that can play defense, and then another guy just to kind of pot you those 10 to 15, maybe even 20 goals out of an eyes over Tuesday. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, he's a, such a great playmaker. Uh, you'd love to see him uh, in the Leafs jersey with that smoked out visor. Uh, you know, he's just such uh, such a great talent. Uh, I think he was played very well in New York, but he's, you know, he's still looking for that cup. And I think, you know, being an Ontario native, he, native he'd love to come home and play in Toronto. But the thing is here, I don't know how much you'd be able to get him at. Like for the Leafs, I think a great contract for him would probably be one and a half, one million, uh, maybe two if you're pushing it. But, uh, you know, like you said, you'd have to uh, give up somebody to get him in. But uh, that's the risk you take. Yeah, no, I could see it almost be a situation where you sign him to just a PTO, like a professional tryout. Let him try in camp, see how he does. I mean, he got bought out for a reason. Obviously, they didn't want to be paying him his $5 million cap hit. So, you know, if he is at the point where he just kind of wants to come home, live in Toronto, live really close to his hometown, and just kind of try to win that championship, I mean, if you can get him for 900000 950000 I'd be ecstatic about that. I know I'd also love to see Islanders fans upset when another uh, Islanders player from Toronto comes home, but, I mean, that's just sprinkles on the cupcake. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah, like like you said, uh, you know, you do see a lot of these guys, you know, take these 950K, 900K contracts just to come back home for a season. I think uh, he really needs to redeem himself, too, just getting bought out. So I think, you know, if he can come back here for a season – and just prove that he what he's like in the league and, and just uh, prove what he's worth and just put up those probably 30 uh, points on a third line or second line maybe uh, I think you know he just it just be do wonders for his career and I think he can make more money uh, in the next season you know if if he's unsigned or if Toronto doesn't sign him back but we're going to get into our next player here who is Jesse Pugliarvi uh, yes Jesse Pugliarvi at 25 is still unsigned another player looking for for uh, a redemption arc uh you know he's only 25 he's still got that potential there uh, i think you know if you could get him on maybe a two-year deal uh, i think you know he's just looking to prove prove himself uh in the league uh last year you know he played uh 58 games at edmonton and put up 14 points and then was traded to carolina where he played 17 games and only put up two points uh and he's coming off a three million dollar contract uh from edmonton so, uh, Mark, I think this is a guy, you know, like a young talent uh, that is, you know, he was at one point in his career a really highly touted prospect for the Edmonton Oilers. And I think he still has that potential there. I just think he needs to be in the right place for it to unleash. And I think, you know, if, if, if Toronto could get him back at a really cheap or get him here at a really cheap contract and just let him blossom here, I think it would do wonders for him and do wonder for the organization. Yeah, the biggest thing you see is when he played in Carolina, he was having a lot of hip injuries. I mean, he did just, just come off a uh, hip surgery. So this seems like more of a guy you might not bring in on a PTO just in case he's not fully healthy. But as a guy, you might start working out a little into the season, maybe a month or two if he's fully there. I just think it was a situation. I'm a big believer, Jesse. I know a lot of play, uh, people are just kind of down on him. But it might have been the situation where a top six role might have been almost too much pressure on a guy like that. So that's where I think if you wanted to fill the role of more of like a physical, grindy guy who can still put up points for you, I think the third line role with him, Domi, and Camp would be incredible because you still get the playmaking out of Domi. You get Pugliarvi, who's this almost untapped potential where you don't know where you're going to get from him. I mean, if he starts to excel and you can put him in your top six, that's just a win-win for everyone. So I could see a situation where you sign him to maybe a million, a million and a half, depending on how far he is into his rehab and stuff like that. But I think if you can get him kind of unleash what he was drafted so high for, I think this is a win-win for Jesse and the Leafs. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, him being unsigned right now is criminal. You know, a 25-year-old player who was such, like, so highly touted, one supposed to be one of the next big stars in the NHL, obviously couldn't find his, his footing and, obviously, like you said, dealing with those injuries. I think he's just looking for revenge and looking for vengeance. I think, you know, if a team picks him up, I think you better watch out for him this year because I think he's just going to explode. And hopefully Toronto picks him up so we get to see him explode uh, in a leash uniform. Uh, but we're going to get into our next uh, topic here, a new segment uh, that we started yesterday. Uh, comment of the day and today's comment of the day goes to uh, Tatiana sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong but 
He says, are you guys in Canada? Love your accent. And yes, me and Mark are both from uh, Newfoundland, Canada. We both got those Newfie accents. Mine probably a bit thicker than Mark's, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we're both uh, we're both from Newfoundland. And we just love seeing your guys' comments down there. We love reading them, going through them every day. And we th thought starting up this segment would just be great just to showcase your, you guys as well. And we just want to say thanks for watching the videos. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you smashed our last... Uh, uh, sub goal out of, out of the park so we're gonna say uh we're looking for a thousand subscribers before the season starts i know that's a bit a bit out there but uh we got faith in you guys we just want to thank you for your support and uh, i've been casey alongside my co-host mark pie keep your stick on the ice